OK, so this will carry on as a bit of a carry on um, kind of question to the answer you've just given, and it will tie in quite nicely, actually. We come to John chapter 3. We have this great Jewish rabban called Nicodemus. He comes to Jesus at night and he says that we know you've come from God uh, because of all the miracles that you're doing, so on and so forth. And Jesus responds that you cannot enter the kingdom unless you're born again. And this shocks Nicodemus because um, like early early Jewish belief was that all Israel, or Pharisaic belief was that all Israel has a share in the age to come. Even if you're the worst of sinners, you still had a portion in the kingdom of God. And another quote, I believe, is that Abraham himself sits at the gates of Gehenna to snatch any Israelite consigned there too. So should you accidentally slip into hell as a Jewish person, Abraham will snatch you out and you'll be fine. So Nicodemus had this view that all Jewish people, if you were born a Jew, you would gain automatic entrance into the kingdom of God, even though it may be of a lesser or greater status. Jesus comes along to him and says, actually, no, you're wrong. You have to be born again. And this shocks Nicodemus. Now, why did this shock Nicodemus? And what was Jesus talking about there? Well, <clears throat> I think Jesus was telling Nicodemus, just to extend from the comments I just made, Yeah, I think Jesus is saying... Um, we're not dating here. We're getting married. Hmm. So if you want to jump in, my Greek professor, same chapter, my Greek professor used to translate John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who for whomsoever commits himself to him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I think he's saying to, to uh, Nicodemus, birthright is not enough here. Mm -hmm. We're talking, are, have you joined the group? Have you punched your, I don't want to say punched your membership card. That's way too parochial. But sure. we get the idea of, I, I love the phrase, I do. I think I think uh, Jesus is asking Nicodemus, are you on board? Are you on board? Because, you know, you know, we have a, a, a secular fantasy, uh, The Wizard of Oz. Mm. And the, the theme of The Wizard of Oz is, stay on the yellow brick road no matter what and as the way it starts dorothy jumps onto the road and stays on it but she's not on it she has to step on it and move yeah. and i think the picture is once we get on this path pilgrim progress it's a path mm -hmm. all these images book of hebrews chapter 11 they were all seeking a city whose building and maker is god it hasn't come yet i think what they're saying is even if you haven't seen it Get on board, follow, and to use the imagery in the in the Wizard of Oz, there's going to be some trees throwing apples at you. There's going to be a big guy with an axe. You're going to go into the darkness of the woods where there's lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. And then you get out the other side, and there's these whatever they were, da plants, daisies, whatever, oh, yeah. Yeah. that would put you to sleep. And and here's the key. When, you, when it puts you to sleep... You need your buddies to come over and pull you up and slap your face and say, here, I'll carry your basket for you. And because because we're working together, it's the body of Christ. So you get this whole idea. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea of Wizard of Oz is no matter what happens, stay on the yellow brick road. And remember, all the little people are shouting at her as they're walking, stay on the yellow brick road. And they're and what are they looking for? The Emerald City. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lot like a secular pilgrim's progress. A yeah. lot like Hebrews 11. I think that's the key. It's a progress. And I think Nicodemus is being shocked to be told that he's got more to do. Um, to whom are you saying yes? Are you saying yes to a concept? Or are you saying yes to a person? Because, again, I emphasize the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus is the key. That's the Christian gospel. But we're not saying yes to the facts we're saying yes to the Jesus about whom the facts are true. Yeah. Uh, just one one quick example. When you say I do to somebody, you don't marry good looks, smart, good personality, fun to be with. You say I do to the person who has those characteristics. Yeah. And when you say I do to Jesus, it's the Jesus who is the Son of God, Son of Man, died on the cross for our sins, was buried, rose again, and he's leading us on the road to the Emerald City. Hmm. So I got this different idea of take up your cross and follow me, as he says. So it all works together, and it, who he is is part of this, do you know who you're saying I do? 
to mm. to and are you following that's the new t and someone might say well that sounds like good works to me well that's kind of a crazy response in a way because yeah. when i said i do in marriage nobody jumps up in the crowd and says good man you just said good works towards your wife yeah. you'd say no i made a commitment to my wife it's very much jumping in with both feet in the sense of making a commitment to the person about whom these characteristics are true yeah. that's what believers are called to do nicodemus was a little bit shocked that he was calling them being called to make that commitment that's amazing this is an aside do you know whether the wizard of oz was written by a christian is that right uh, no, I, don't, I was asking you. I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. Because I, I think with, with bomb, Dorothy, right? she had the um, the ruby slippers that took her home. Now, whether that's a symbol of Christ's blood or not, I don't. I'm not sure. I have no idea. But but you know, to me, the idea of an emerald city, it's interesting that in the Book of Revelation, uh, the descriptive verses in 21 and 22, hmm. whenever people can say, oh, the, the the city coming down is metaphorical, or the city coming down is physical. That's all missing my point. Yeah. My point is when they describe what this is, about one-third of all the descriptive verses are colors and stones. And so when we say uh, the Emerald City, that's not far from the biblical picture. Only only the New Jerusalem has multi. Remember every every uh, doorway, every entrance was a stone of a different color. It was a foundation. The streets were gold. It's very much in terms of stones and colors. Mm. And I think that that, you know, Christian or non-Christian, somebody who makes a, writes a story like Wizard of Oz or Pilgrim Progress, they're using very deep-seated imagery yeah. that we can relate to. And in this case, it ends up in the last two chapters in the New Testament.